solid stream out the back of this prop. Then we can take a look at how much air that's pulling in and how much it's displacing out ahead. When you take a look at a straight or a solid stream with no manipulation, what do I mean by manipulation? You moving the nozzle, okay? So no, no manipulation means bail open, just let the stream flow. Also, no deflection off of any surface. We're letting it flow straight out the back. That is moving somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 cubic feet per minute of air, okay? With a solid stream coming out of a smooth bore nozzle, obviously the construction of the nozzle allows that to be a tighter, more solid stream, right? You're a little bit closer to the 1,000. When we look at a um, straight stream coming out of a combina combination nozzle, you're a little closer to the 2,000. But in the grand scheme of things, those are negligible, right? In the grand scheme of things for the firefighting application, the one to 2,000 is pretty much the same for us, okay? So what he's gonna do first is flow that straight out the back. It's obviously breezy, we're out here. These are only gonna do so much. Really when you're gonna see these take over is when we start doing the combination on the actual fog, okay? So that stream simply flowing out into the space in front of him is about 1,000 to 1,500 CFM. What I'm going to have him do next is start a slow pattern. We are gonna do an O pattern, all right? So he's going to go and try and encompass the surfaces of that hallway, all right? I don't want the O pattern up high because I've left the bottom portion of that flow path I am trying to block off open. He's going to start an O pattern slowly and then increase the speed of that. That is going to give us a range of somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000 CFM. So the host stream type has not changed, but our manipulation of that is now what's changing. Go ahead. he does the pattern, more air he brings with him, okay? This is not saying you should go through the building and whip the line as fast as you possibly can. It's getting across the fundamentals of what changes your air entrainment. Not the flow, not the pressure, but how you use it, all right? So a solid stream, slow O pattern, that 4,000 CFM, you can see that overtook the wind, right? Those started to pull in. Faster he did it, more they pulled in. When we are talking about water on the advance to the compartments that are on fire, we want to achieve some compartmentation just like they try to do with gas cooling. But we are compartmentalizing with our water. Think about the O pattern that you're doing in whatever space you're in, right? It doesn't need to be a hallway. When it's in a hallway, your pattern is a little narrower. When you're going from a large room to a large room, you just widen up your O's a little bit, all right? That pattern out in front of you is creating a doorway that you are keeping closed in front of you as you go to the fire. Does that make sense? That closed door that you are making with your water serves a wide variety of purposes. Number one, as you saw, you're bringing in a good amount of air with you. Where is that air coming from? Wherever the line came in. If that's from the front door, you're bringing fresh air in the front door. If that's from a side door, you're bringing fresh air in from the side door. When you have the bale open, and you are employing a pattern going from compartment to compartment on the way to a fire, you are improving conditions behind the line. The visibility is increasing, the survivability is increasing, and the oxygen concentrations are going up. All right, Things behind the line are getting better when the bale is open and you have a pattern working through the building. Additionally, as you do that pattern and we make a door, you are stopping everything that is bad from out ahead from coming back over top. All right, it is truly like a door. So you want to stop all those products of combustion, the heat, the high convective flow from coming towards you as the nozzle team and to anybody that may be behind you, whether that's other crews operating, searching, or victims that you have passed on your way during fire attack, okay? So the bale's gotta be fully open and you gotta be doing some type of pattern to make that happen. <clears throat> what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the combination nozzle on all right, we're sticking with that 50 PSI but we are, and a similar flow, but we have a combination nozzle versus a smooth bore nozzle now. You're going to see a very similar principle, all right? Straight stream out the back, 1,500 to 2,000 CFM. Then we're going to do a slow O pattern and pick up that speed. 
right back in that four to 6,000 CFM range. All right, so again, not about the nozzle tight. You can do the same thing with a 7 8 on a smooth bore tip as you could with a combination nozzle, 160 or 150 at 50. All right, not about the flow, not about the pressure, about how you manipulate it. As we get into building this attack, where the pressure is going to come into play is your ability to maneuver the line like Jerry talked about this morning. We're trying to build the case to get you guys to understand why you want to be advancing with that bail open, right? It's a benefit for a wide variety of reasons that we just talked through. The other piece I want to hit on real quick now that I'll continue to hammer on is what I touched on briefly yesterday during the round table. You have to separate your perception as the nozzle firefighter for what is from what is good for the global impact in the building, all right? If I am in the hallway here and the layer's three to four foot off the ground, and I think I can just scoot under that and get down to the room that's on fire, you probably could. But what is that smoke doing as it comes back past you and hits the wall back over here? It's going to the ground, right? Your perception is very local to where you are. We have to get away from what I see and feel is dictating what I'm doing taking the blinders off, getting the tunnel vision away, and saying what's gonna have the most bang for the buck on everywhere in the building. Because if I effectively surface cool, I'm improving conditions not only here, but globally, all right? When you apply water to hot surfaces inside of the compartment, what do the temperatures do? They drop. What is directly related to temperature? Pressure. When temperatures drop, what do the pressures do? Drop. When pressures are dropping, what does that mean the gases are doing? contracting literally physically doing this inside of whatever space you're flowing water right you have to think about that the more surfaces you can cool in a quicker fashion as in coat more surfaces simultaneously the quicker the temperatures drop the quicker the pressures drop the more the gases contract when the gases here in the hallway that are super hot are contracting what are they ma being made up by air smoke heat from other places in the building so if I am effectively cooling here in the hallway, I can be dropping temperatures on the second floor of this house without ever applying water to those spaces. So again, I don't care at the end of the day if you feel like you need to flow water or not. Back up, take a breath, think about, will flowing water right here right now make things better for the rest of the building? And that answer is most commonly yes. All right? So back to the air entrainment. Phil's gonna do that straight stream out the back. 1500 to 2000 CFM, then start that slow O and increase that speed. 